statistically, this is the best run since Tiger's heyday, since like 05, 06, 07. Four players, right? Barstool Sports brought to you by our uh, our very fun friends at Chevy. We love Chevy, the Blazer EV. It's U.S. Open time. As you're listening to this, the U.S. Open's pretty much about to commence or has already commenced. Pinehurst, uh, I would say up to this point, about as hyped for a major championship as I've ever been. The sound bites, the golf course. I love when the golf course is the story, and pretty much it has been. Uh, right out of the gate, Wyndham Clark said, you know, when he was asked, do you think the greens could potentially get borderline? He said, they're already borderline. Um, you're seeing all kinds of ball drops where the ball just rolls, rolls, rolls off the greens into bad spots. We got a new video out. Frank Borelli, the oh. third, played Pinehurst number two on media day. Uh, played your own ball, played well, and the whole video's out, which is kind of our version of a course tour, which is nice. But uh, I highly recommend people go watch that. Yeah, we did 63, 24 yards, uh, media day tees. I think it was like a white, I think it was the white tees. Um, but man, the greens were ripping even then. That was about four weeks ago it was it was the monday of the pga championship and the greens were ripping <laughs> logan our caddy was like it won't get much harder out here uh for regular like public play he goes i don't know how they can even turn this up for the u.s open and they somehow have like there's got to be a limit to how much you can push grass yeah you know what i mean yeah, totally. like, how, how, how fine do you cut these things and how dried <clears throat> out can you make them before you lose the grass you can like, lose I know the my golf backyard, course you can lose the golf course zach johnson famously it's gone. It's gone. Some yeah, it's gone. Where, where, where was that? Shinnecock? It's gone. Shinnecock. Yeah. That's Some one of the funniest clips. thought that they have lost golf courses before. One of the he, funniest clips of all time. Yeah. He, US uh, Open's going back to Shinnecock in 2026. Could be Carnegie. You think they're going to find that course by then? That was, <laughs> it's gone. USGA. It's been, it's been out in the wilderness for six <laughs> years. <laughs> <laughs> it's just out on Long Island. It's gone. I'll, 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 yeah, yeah, I'll go out there. I'll see if it's there. <laughs> the... Uh, I think we looked it up last night. That was the last time a winner a winner of the U.S. Open was over par with yep. Shinnecock, 2018. Uh, I, I like. I think that we should all do predictions on what the final score, the winning final score will be. I looked on the DraftKings sports book, 274 and a half is the over under. Wow, that's low. Which is five and a half under. Yeah. So somewhere between five and six under is sort of what they have it at. Uh, but I did look, and amazingly. Um, being lower than six under or lower is minus 150. So it's the heavy favorite. And lower, you're saying seven, eight, nine? Under. Yeah, okay. I guess. More I mean, under. last time it was here, like we were talking about, I mean, it was the winning score was nine under, but there was only one guy better than one under. He won by eight. In the history of the U.S. Opens here, which there's been three, 1999, 2005, 2014, only four players have finished under par. Wow. Wow. Payne Stewart was one under when he won in 99. Michael Campbell, I believe, was the only player under par. I think he was – or no, he was even par in 2005. So that's still one player. And then 2014, Keimer was nine under. Compton and Fowler were both one wow. under. So four players ever here at U.S. Open have finished under par. But Keimer does skew it. I mean, he was nine under. Yeah, and I think, you know, they've gotten longer. They've gotten better since then. I, I think it will be an under par winner, but I, I think it's going to be one of those U.S. Opens where it's like between – Two and four, maybe five under. Is this the closest to the pin question we got coming later? It's not, but I was just noticing that's that Peter Millar shirt you're talking about with yeah. the no buttons. I like it. It's nice, right? It's cool. It's, it's like, like a tennis v shirt. Yeah, it's like a V-neck with a color. Um, it's nice. Yeah. I do. I have a couple of Add those. Add that to the closest in. to the pin. Winning score of the 2024 US Open? Or, yeah, I'll take it Oh, out. you got? I thought you only had two. I got four. Oh, oh you already got to four. That yeah, was yeah. quick. Three minutes ago, you said you, you had two. fast. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, I have a good one that I think is going to be fun. Do you guys want to get close to the pin right away? No, I mean, we, don't we don't have to. <laughs> what's going on here? I will say, I will say, <laughs> I believe Fireball Whiskey has requested to uh, have the closest pin be earlier in so the show. So let's get right <laughs> into it, baby. <laughs> let's he do it right it. now. Let's, let's do, do it right it, now. Man. I'll add that one. I'm taking out the Luka Doncic one. It's not basketball week. Okay. It's, it's, okay. So you, this is the United States Open. It's the United Open. States Open. So what was that question? staring at me right now from the game right now. So oh, right what's the winning the score? Looking. All right. Minus over here. Hey, let's talk about Fireball Whiskey really quickly. Absolutely. We had a little event yesterday called Battle in the Pines. Phenomenal logo. Really good. Phenomenal logo. Fireball Whiskey was one of the sponsors of the event. They give out this jacket that they've been giving out. Oh, that my God. The jacket was sick. <laughs> when somebody wins, golf bags, jacket. The jacket is all time. And Fireball Whiskey is all time. We <laughs> love them. The 50 milliliter shooters, man. They just up the ante everywhere. Every experience, especially on the golf course. Go grab them. They've got the birdie shot club that has, what, 10 of those things in it? Something it's like that. It's a literal golf club. You put it in your golf bag. 
<laughs> thing's awesome. They got all kinds of fun stuff and Fireball. You know it. You like it. It's delicious. Cinnamon whiskey, Fireball, 50 milliliter shooters. We love Fireball, and they bring you closest to the pin. All right, so closest to the pin. We're, do you want to do you want an update? Oh, let's get an update from Alex Bush. Oh, I can't wait to hear it. I'm, my my phone's I'm, charging. I'm dominant. God, Your we phone. have gotten I know our so dicks so kicked in. I haven't been on the podcast. I haven't been on the podcast in two we'll weeks. I'm still dominant. Wow. Yeah. Um, so an update. Last week, we had John Rahm's finishing position at Live Houston. We're going to avoid that one. So he, I got to say, this is closest to the pin is officially cursed because we had <laughs> Nelly Corda score <laughs> on <laughs> Thursday of the U.S. Open. She made it 10. We had Scotty Scheffler score on Saturday of the U.S. Open. He went to jail, and then we had, <laughs> and then we had John Rahm's finishing position in the Houston Live event, and he withdrew from the tournament and subsequently withdrew from the United States Open. So we got to be careful. Yeah, uh, that's true. Fuck. We do got to be really careful. Like, don't touch anyone that we like. With these. <laughs> <laughs> Is there someone that we like in these? Oh, uh, well, yeah, it's all of them. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Alex, give us the update. Um, and then uh, total games in the French Open men's final, which was forty-four. Dan was one off. Dan wow. takes that one. God, I was right there. Yeah. Number of uh, tweets from Robert McIntyre over the weekend was zero. Yeah, he was. He got so after it. So I guess Riggs wins that. Yeah, he had two. So does he yeah. usually tweet a lot? Two is close. Well, he was to going zero. back to Oban to have like a he, bender, and he I was doesn't like, tweet that much. Okay, yeah. I was. I was because I kind of Dan kind of fucked us. I don't want to say cheated, but I did real time research, and I was like, he only ever tweets like really fun time at the Canadian Open with my partner or you know whoever. <laughs> That's like all he ever yeah. tweets. And then the last one was Hovland's score in round two at Memorial. Dan and I both got spot on 69. That's devastating. Sick number. And nice. the status right now, Trent 39, which he got two or he got two points from Scotty's next win when he won on Sunday. Oh. Because you guessed Memorial Sunday. Let's go, dude. So what Trent's at 39. F- oh, thank you. Dan 26. Riggs oh. 24. Frankie and I 22. I'm on Damn. a bit of a Scotty run myself here. <laughs> <laughs> the gap between Tommy me Fleet and was second is unbelievable. Scotty Tommy Fleetwood on the here. sixth hole. You can see him up on the screen. Who? Oh, yeah, Tommy Fleetwood's walking Look by the that. house. Oh, nice. That's that bright ass fucking video board right there. All right, so closest, uh, no, uh, yeah, close to the pin. Here we go. So we know one of the questions, but we'll save that one. Oh, we'll just rip that one off the off the rip. Yeah. yeah. What's the winning score going to be? And are we we're, we're going to do this um, water system live, all at no? the same time? Yeah, that's how we usually that's do. That's what we do relative to par. This is relative, yeah, relative to, par. to par. Relative to par. That's too much math for the rest. Of the right. Okay. So just the how many? Yeah. Okay. Relative to par. Um, Winning score of the 2024 U.S. Open. Pioneers number two. That's okay. right. Okay. I got. I got. I got to think as well. I got one. I got, I got one. one too. Yeah. I got mine. It's gonna be right. So hopefully you guys guess the same. Okay. Yeah. Ready? I'm ready. Three, two, one. Three, three, under. three. Even. You said. You said three under. Mm-hmm. I said four under. I said three four under. under. We're really simple. I'm rooting for the golf course. <laughs> Even par all of be, our scores are, but even in particular, even par would be magic. After la- I mean, last year I've said it so many times, which is such a dud. I'm I'm so this this feels like a proper U.S. Open. Even par would be great. I also been thinking like the course isn't that different than it was in 2014. Yeah, and they're all better. Yeah, so I do think an uh, uh, over par or even score would be amazing. Yeah, I think it's a little bit unlikely, but I'm rooting for it. How about this? Turn the hoses off. Hoses got yeah, you go. had a scoop. By the way, people are very. Uh, we've known this for years, but I mean, I didn't even say anything. I just, I just, in clearly like not that serious of a scoop. Just was like, oh, yep. they're watering the sixth green, and people are fighting about how I need to relax, being like they're actually not even watering them. They're just like syringing them. You need, you're making everybody panic. I'm like, I literally just tweeted a video where they're just. They I saw you man with green. with a hose, and so I tweeted. <laughs> have it. A hose. You might have you might have moved some betting lines. Who knows, <laughs> oh, dude? Dude, and then people were also pissed. They're like, they need to stop watering this. We want carnage. I was like, all right, it's Tuesday. That's what I mean, you got you have to water the greens. That's not like maybe even just like douse them with a little water. They got to survive. They have to survive. And yeah. I saw they were talking about uh, on live from, which is again my favorite TV program in history. They were going on last night, um, and just talking about how if they if they get one pin location wrong, the USGA like. That's it. They can go 71 for 72, and people are pissed. So true. And it, like, scars the entire event. And Just trying to sign into your phone for three minutes. How'd that go? Sorry. I'll be honest. You could. I had one instance. Hey, sorry. Ten, I hate to interrupt you. I'm sorry. I'm maybe sorry. 10 years ago with my buddy, uh, my buddy Mike, and he was on the Ox, but he was totally distracted. He's in, like, a, you know, Civil War beer pong game or something. We couldn't get his attention. And I just tried 69-69 on his phone. <laughs> Open right up. <laughs> yeah, I just I was over there putting my thing. I was like, why is there was a name on there that would never text me? Is it, I think it's Lynx Gems, maybe. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah, I was like, why out. is Lynx Gems texting me? <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> That's great. Shout out to John. Uh, all right, great. I'm sorry I interrupted you. 
Another, somebody said tennis shirt. This is another fun fact from live from last night that Paul McGinley was all over. Um, they pulled up Roger Federer giving commencement speech, I think, mm -hmm. at Dartmouth. Yeah. And he was going through his record, and he said his singles match record, he's won 80% of his singles matches. But he said in those matches, what percentage of the points has he won, do you think? Oh, I saw this, so I know it's it. probably like, it's probably only like 58, 9, 60. 54%. Yeah. So he goes, he's won 80% of his matches, but in those matches, he's only won 54% of the points. That's crazy, yeah. So it's his so whole, crazy. the message well, was Well, it's true, though, like, lot, you know, in whatever. 2018 at Shinnecock, it was that, what was it, 14, I think, was, like, the one hole on Saturday where it was pretty much impossible, and then that was the story for the entire tournament. Right, it was, like, one pin location. Yeah. Um, okay. Yep. So going with the uh, score to par, Tiger Woods scored a par after two rounds at the U.S. Open, the United States Open. Tiger Woods scored a par, and uh, you know if you say withdraw, that could be your, that could be your answer. Nah, he looks good. He looks strong. There you go, Danny. <laughs> no, I'm drinking the Kool Aid. Start, start, I really do. Start lubing it up, dude. Let's go. I think that he looks a lot. I've got my answer. More physically fit. I've got my answer. I, in terms of him looking good, I got to tell you, my dad was locked in with him on the binoculars yesterday. He walked by. He's been no telling way. everybody. He goes. You know, as when you get older, you can really tell when someone's older the way they walk, and if their heel goes all the way down to the ground, that means they're walking pretty healthy. And he goes, "That heel is all the way down." <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Your that dad, was, that your almost changed dad, my answer. Your dad is so fucking locked in this week. He loves this shit. Dude. Xander He's Shoffley like, is his favorite human being who's ever walked Xander. on the planet. He, he loves Xander. He's He's still I've seen him three high. times this week, and every time he goes, "Man, Xander's looking good this week." He's been tell. I mean, our server at fucking the Villager this morning is it knows about Xander and how locked in he is. My dad was just <laughs> he was grinding on it. Um, all right, everyone got their their answer. Yes, sir. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. Five one over. over. I one said, over. That'd be sick. That'd be electric. Be unbelievable. What'd you say? One over. I said two over. Okay, I was, I'm three over, and I still I'm I don't feel good about him. I said, Ever since Valhalla, I still don't feel good about him. I said five over. I so think did he I. Makes the cut. I think the cut will be like six or seven over. I think Tiger Woods is really good at managing uh, golf courses to not make birdies. I think like the Tommy Fleetwood. So we went out to dinner the other night, and Adrian was there, and Brandon was there, and they were talking a little bit about what um, Tommy Fleetwood needs to do to be able to win major championships or to be able to, why does he play so well in majors and not as great in regular tournaments? And Adrian had one of the greatest answers. Like if you get put on the spot like that, to have an answer that actually answers the question is insane. Yeah. Like, hey, Especially how come, when talking to a guy like Brandon, how come Tommy yep. performs so well in us opens? And then he just has the answer. Like that's such an insane question. What was his answer? And he had an answer. It unlike that, any other answer I've ever heard. Right. It was it's hard to Tommy, have something unique. Basically between his eyes, between his ears, he plays golf to not make a bogey. Maybe that's his fault sometimes, but on really difficult golf courses in really difficult settings against the best players in the world, that actually propels him higher than most people where he's constantly thinking, where is the safest place to land this ball? Oh, I could go after the pin and try and make a birdie here, but the chances of me going over are too high for my liking. Yeah. So let's go for the front. Let's change the club. So when he caddied for him, he's like, I, I could sense that maybe at like the rocket mortgage that might not work because you need to fire 21 under or whatever right. it might be. And Tommy can still do that. He's done it before. I mean, he performed well on, in the Canadian Open, the Canadian Open and stuff like that. Like, he can do it. He does it in other places aside from the PGA Tour. Um, but fuck, man, I, that really – that made me think like Tiger Woods is probably that, that same way where he can just like manage no bogeys. We always have this hypothetical about like if Tiger had to play on the Corn Ferry Tour right now, it might be a tough scene. We were because like, would he even make the cut? Like those guys, you got to shoot thirty-one under. Right. Oh, that's like would he even make the cut? But then we were also laughing last night. We'd be like, imagine Tiger went, signed up, played one Corn Ferry Tour, shot like forty-two under, and was like, yeah, I mean, this is a these joke. guys are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, Tiger Woods, the gap. Yeah. 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 What, are, what are we doing? No, I do think you're right. This though. is so but easy. He's got a much better chance on a course like this than than I just manage the par. Is just like like obviously one over would be out of control. But he might be in the lead if that if that's the case. But. Um, yeah, I just I don't know. I think if you if you eliminate the need for Tiger to go search for birdies out here, and just say play this course level par, mm -hmm. I think he could fucking do it. He was so yeah. in his presser yesterday. He was so in line with that, and he was yeah. saying like, "I love grinding. Like I genuinely just enjoy the challenge of being able to grind your way around a tough." He's like, "I love U.S. Opens." Like he said, he's like, "I love U.S. Opens." And he hasn't played one in a while. Yeah. I mean, he, he finishes well here, right? Like, he's always done pretty well here. He's got he a second and a third here, I believe. I mean, come on. This guy's primed and ready to go. He looks healthy. He didn't Warm. play today. He's just practicing he's today. He's got that heel all the way down. He hasn't played he since Wingfoot, right? I don't think he's played since that weird one at Wingfoot, right? Is that right? Yeah. 2021, so. he had the accident. Yeah. 22, 
he didn't play at Brookline. He just like didn't play. Yep, that's true. And then last year he had ankle surgery. So yeah, he hasn't played since 2020 U.S. Open. He hasn't played a single U.S. Open that's since crazy. 2020. Yeah. He missed the cut as fuck that week. I remember that. That yeah. could happen to anybody. Dude. How many birdies will Scotty Scheffler make on Thursday of the U.S. Open? Okay. okay. Can you do Friday so that people have oh, yeah, a chance to... <clears throat> How many birdies will Scotty <laughs> Scheffler make on Friday of the U.S. Open? That's a good one, Frank. Well, Thank that you. That is good. Every part of that's good. Um... Ready to rock? Man, I want the Thursday bad. You know, How's he, is he going to come out fire? Yeah, we want people to participate. I know. All right, so we'll do Friday. Man, that changes my thought process now. Mm, I think he'll make less on Friday, to be honest. Okay. Um, okay. I'm ready. I'm, I'm scared about my answer, but I'm ready. Three, two, one. Four. four. I said bogeys? four. Maybe one. Four. Damn, what'd you say? I said four. I think all of us. Yeah. We had four fours. I said two. Except for you. Four fours and a two. All right. I almost didn't say four because I knew everyone was going to say four. Fuck. If he if he makes two birdies and sixteen pars, he's gonna win the United States Open. Are Problem the is, there's gonna the be some bogeys. Fives, I know, I know. Are the par fives like pretty reachable? Yeah, five yeah. is definitely reachable, but the green's the hardest green out here. That's the one that famously the video from yesterday where the guy dropped it at the top yeah, of the green and yeah. it rolled all the way off. So that green's bananas, but it's reachable. And then the tenth hole is like six forty or What's something. What's the hole that I played as a par five? Is it eight? Eight. And they're playing it as a par four. It was when we walked. It's really not division. that difficult of a par four. We walked. We no. we walked the Tiger yesterday, and they drill because it's a little downhill, kind of off the yeah. tee. They drill those drives way down there, and they mm-hmm. hit just like an iron into the green. It's mm-hmm. just like a diff, it's like a semi difficult par four. Eight and sixteen are the converted ones, right? Yeah, sixteen's tough. Yeah, sixteen is the one over the pond where you got to really like hit it down the left side, and then you hit it down into that. That green is tough. Yeah. All right, my final question for closest to the pin, presented by Fireball, is. What will the highest score on a hole be this week? Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Whoa. That's a good one. Yeah. That's fun. Wait, hold on. <laughs> There's really not many OB opportunities. You can't really lose a ball. You could hit one out of bounds, but only in very few spots. You, you, even then you would find it, but like that doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. I think I'm ready. Three, two, one. Nine. Nine. <laughs> ten. I said ten. I said ten. Two nines, two Nine. tens. Ah, oh, fuck you, Alex Bush. <laughs> Someone's gonna play ping pong. Oh yeah. yeah. Someone's gonna go over the green and then. Mm-hmm. Back so the you green guys think double digits? Feet, and someone's gonna lose their head. I yeah. almost said eleven. Yeah. I almost went crazy, but then I'm I thinking like that. I'm thinking on a par, a tough par four. Yeah. You know, someone like hits one in the trees. Chips out, it doesn't go great. They're still in a bush. Then they finally get it there. <laughs> they're like they're running out of gas. They're pissed. They hit it on the green. It spins into a bunker. They fucking blade one over, and now they're hitting. They're like seven. It's gonna be ugly. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. You gotta remember, like, there's guys in this tournament who have never played a major That's before. What I was there's say. qualifiers. I was talking to, um, I think his name is Colin Prater. Uh, he's the the science teacher mm-hmm. who made it. He made it through two rounds of qualifying in Colorado. He was like. Uh, yeah, I played amazing for 27 holes. I like blacked out in the qualifier, and then I held on for dear life for and the now last nine, and now I'm here. <laughs> He's like, it was a great, basically an out of body experience. Right. So, <laughs> yeah, those guys here. So there's a, there's a big there's a big chance for that. I love that we have those guys. Yeah. This episode is brought to you by Chevy Chevrolet. We are talking Blazer EV. We're talking Motor Trend 2024. They rated them all, man. They checked them all out. They checked out the luxury SUVs. They checked out gas, hybrid, electric. Any SUV you've ever heard of, they checked it, and they looked at the Blazer EV SUV from Chevy, and they said, that's the one. That's the best one. It's a great It's a great car. I talked about last show that I needed to get stuff to my house with Chevy. Like a Chevy's a man's car. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a boy's car. You know, like there's something about it that like, I don't know. I, I just, I feel like I'm not, where I need to be unless I have a Chevy. It's an American institution. Yeah, you feel like... You get things know. done with it. Yeah, you really do. You get things done. That's what Chevrolet is all about. And get now you can do done. it with the innovation, with the technology, with the electricity. I mean, come on. This is the way of the future. Electricity? Uh, we do. We love Chevy. They're <laughs> great. They've been great partners with us, and they've been doing it for 100 years. They've been making the EVs for a long time. They've got the 17.7-inch standard diagonal display screen infotainment centers it's been called in this show before i believe you can get an e- an available epa estimated 324 miles of range on a full charge so that seems like it'll get you anywhere you need to go it's a lot head over to chevy.com slash blazer ev just type that link in right now that's chevy.com slash blazer ev to check out lease offers and amazing deals chevrolet together let's drive
This is so cool that the U.S. Open is being the U.S. Open without rough. That like, because yeah. there's a little concern, and again, not to bring it back, but my, my dad, but like my dad a year ago was like, so the Open, like when it's here, when, when do they put the rough in? You know, and I'm like, ah, there's no rough. He's like, U.S. Open with no rough? You know, yeah. he just was like, Impossible. what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. It's not my U.S. Open. And now even he's kind of like, I don't think they need the rough out here. They don't. So he's like, I'm t- I didn't tell you, it looks pretty tough without the rough. Well, like, the, the waste areas are a lot denser. Keimer was saying in yeah. the interview yesterday that when he won here in 14, when you hit it in the waste bunkers, it was like 70, uh, 30 that you'd have a shot. And he said it's flipped now to like 70, 30, you won't really have a shot. Yeah. And I believe like from what I'm understanding, they planted thousands of those things. And they're all in the landing zone areas. So it's like from 280 to 330 out there is where all of a sudden it's way denser on the left and right side of those fairways. Um, I don't know if you guys said this before. Uh, Keimer hasn't won anything since the U.S. Open here. That blew me away. He's got one of the most bizarre careers. He hasn't won anything. Dude, he won the no he won, tour. He won the PGA. And that year he won the players when it was in May still. And then the U.S. Open right after. And he was like, this was he was 29. Was he number one old. in the world? Yes, he got to number one in the world. And he hasn't won a single golf He's only tournament. 39. Like, you think of him as this old guy. He's 39. Oh, he hasn't wow. won the Asia Tour, the DP World <laughs> Tour. He hasn't won a live know. event. Can you check that, Bush? Yeah, he's a Brandel set. Yeah, then I guess, yeah, that's wild. Zero. That's crazy. Won that U.S. Open going away. like By a million. Yeah. Dude, he hasn't won a Corn Ferry event. <laughs> he hasn't won anything. Dude, I remember then in 2016 was... No, was it? It was 2012. Was the Ryder Cup when he made the winning putt Medina. at Medina? Yeah, and that was he had like gone through this crazy phase where he tried to change his swing to from cutting it to drawing it to try to win at the Masters. So from like 2010, he won the PGA, and then the 2012 Ryder Cup, he got enough points because of those the year two years prior, how good he was. He got to number one in the world, the whole deal. But then he was so bad at the Ryder Cup going into that that they like barely played him. And then all of a sudden the whole Ryder Cup came down to his butt when he had that six footer and he made it. Yeah. And that clip of him going nuts, like, yeah, it's cool. He won the Ryder Cup. But also the backstory is that like he was awful. Yeah. Going wow. in. They were like nervous that they had him on the team because it's like he qualified automatically with right. his points, whatever. And then he hits that putt to win the Ryder Cup. And he's here this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's he's here. uh he's here. He did a press conference yesterday. He's wearing his cle- he's on the cliques. They just won their first live event as a team. Cleeks. Yeah, he's playing in the event. He's playing the event. Yeah, that's like yeah. I was wondering, I, even in my head, I was like, yeah, he uh, he's had a weird career, man. Very strange career. Yeah. Huh. T- took the live bag, which made a lot of sense given where he was in his career. He's a perfect case. Take the live. Yeah, take the take bag. the live stuff. How much could that bag have been? Very nice guy. I don't. He got in the first wave when they were handing out bags. Oh, maybe then. So it might have been might have been ten million dollars. He's one of those guys too. He was talking on live from about like yeah, I just like living over here and playing on the tour like wasn't well, for me. Yeah. He's like mm-hmm. now I live in Germany with like my family and like oh yeah, you're from Germany. It makes sense. The old him and Thomas, Thomas Peters. Yeah, I mean that's right. Say, him and Peters should the hang Belgians. Out. Yeah. He didn't know who oh, to go to dinner with. <laughs> See, I'm not, I can't to find to... anybody to go to dinner with. I'm not playing on this tour anymore. Yeah. I love like, Thomas. I miss we like, Thomas. So do I. He's awesome. <laughs> yeah, he is. We were, yeah, we were like, are you telling me like no one on tour goes to dinner with anyone? <laughs> they just, they all so just don't like have Uber anyone to go to dinner with? Or something. I don't know. Figure something else out. <laughs> it's got to be another answer. We got to get like an Uber friend or a Bumble friend yeah. for Thomas Peters on tour. <laughs> I like Find that. somebody to start swiping. You, man. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, I had a, I ran into Justin Thomas yesterday, was walking his dog with his, um, Wife, they're married, right? I believe yeah. they're married, yeah. Uh, his wife just through the village. His dog's Franklin, right? Mm-hmm. And um, and I was just, because you think U.S. Open and how chaotic it is, and when it is at Shinnecock, there's like one road to get in, and it's just like chaos. And for whatever reason, the way they funneled stuff through here in like the Piner's Village yesterday morning, like JT was walking with his dog, and there was no one around, no one saying a word to him. Crazy. And it was just delightful. And he actually yelled at me. I stopped with my parents. He met my parents. He was super nice to my parents. And then... Our boy Mike Myers, who's twelve year old Pete's dad, twelve mm-hmm. year old Pete's now sixteen and like getting recruited by colleges to play golf. Um, they, because he's they've got four kids and they were getting a bunch of autographs and whatnot. And they said that like of all the guys that they uh, were able to get autographs from, whatever, that like JT was like the nicest to the kids and all that. So just a shout out to JT being he a real just, nice guy. Uh, we just went out of the course, me and Frankie, before we did the podcast, and we saw him teeing off, and he said, "Congrats on breaking 90. Yeah, <laughs> that's so. He good. saw my hat today and said, "Did you lose a bet?" So my guess would be so nice to everybody me about except Dan Rappaport. Text me about your SC hat. SC said that so he would say this to your face, but he's like, he doesn't know why you're wearing that hat. He said it to my face. Okay, good. First thing he said was, why are you wearing that hat? <laughs> yeah. That's good. 
You know, That's nice. people are talking. Let yeah, talk. you got people. I want to say though, the hair is looking good now. Okay, people are coming around. Your I'm mom's coming a big around fan. on the hair. My mom loves short hair, yeah. and she. I do feel bad. I never conveyed this to you. But she did tell me when you were getting all that shit, she told me on a private phone call, she was like, I think Dan's hair looks amazing Thank short. This is Bazillion. I appreciate it. It's coming <laughs> around now. Thank you. Thank you. You do have a nice hairline. Thank you. That's nice. It is. Cheers, boys. I'm trying to remember what it used to look like. It was like way shorter and more military like. No, but like yeah, before but it gets you did that. It, it gets just, a little curly. Yeah, it was just like almost. curly and kind of wavy. It's just easier this way. It's because like, we're making so many videos and my hair looks like shit half the time and then I'd have to fucking do this and it's easier. No, it looks good. It looks yeah. good. No, I like it. Um, John Rom. Yeah, man. WD foot thing. He came in weird move overall that he so he withdrew last week, right? In live, which obviously we didn't get the closest to pin, which is devastating. But he withdrew last week on live, shows up late. I didn't see it Monday, right? So he's like only here, <laughs> shows up Tuesday, shows up for his presser, and in the presser is not a happy camper necessarily. And then just withdraws shortly afterwards. So he came yeah. all the way to Piners, it feels like, and knew he was going to, not knew, but like really good chance he's going to withdraw, does the whole press conference, the whole deal, and then withdraws. And now he's just out. Yeah, I don't, you know, it's, I don't want to make any declarations, but it just, it hasn't been, a, hasn't been the best year. I think it's safe to say that. He played well and lived in the beginning, but, you know, he missed the cut at the Masters, or T45 at the Masters, missed the cut at the PGA, not going to get a chance to tee it up uh, at the U.S. Open. So he's got one more chance to, to avoid the worst, you know, the worst major season of his career so far. Wow. That's just a fact. Yeah. You know, facts only. You can look into that and you say with this, that or the other. I don't, you know, I don't think that the, it's, I don't think he's played bad because he went to live. It's just, those are facts, you know? I feel bad, you know, professional golf is better with John Rahm around. Way better. He's a character. Yeah. That's he's what wearing I mean. a shoe. He had the one flip flop on. You could see he has some sort of bandages on his toes. It's like infected or something. I think he said. I don't know what the hell's going on. He's had like issues with his feet his whole life, right? Isn't he have like a club? Well, that's foot? like he's got. It's like uh, he they had to break it when he was yeah. young, right? Yeah, he had a yeah. club foot. I don't know if that's like if one is equal to the other. I'm assuming yeah. it's not, but some feet foot infection, right? If it's still getting infected from that, we got that's like, You got to get a better doctor. Yeah, <laughs> day one, like that's a tough scene. Yeah, uh, but yeah. that's a shame. I'm with you. It sucks. Like it's you know it sucks anytime we don't get all these guys together with live and tour. We talked about it a trillion times, but like Rom not playing here. Even as a guy who, like, I, I love Piners so much. It's like a shame they're not going to have, like, pictures and stuff from John Rahm playing right. the U.S. Open of Piners. It's yeah. like guy won the U.S. Open a couple of years ago. He's the man. He's one of the top players. A year ago, he was the top guy. I yeah. mean, this time last year, he was the top dog. It is, it is funny how much that changes and how fast. Like, if you listen to this podcast a year ago, we were like, he's going to win 10 majors potentially in a row. <laughs> yeah, I think we Like, he's just going to win them all. The recency bias is insane. Crazy. Uh -huh. And then if you listen to this year, obviously it's Scotty. It's been Scotty for however long. But you would, if you go back and listen, it's like John Rahm, and he was at the time, just the greatest golfer in the world. And now he's not playing in the U.S. Open a year later. It's wild. And has really been completely irrelevant. In terms of contention of big tournaments, yes, like completely relevant, not even around at the PGA, he looked pissed recorded. off. Like, <laughs> remember how just like... mad he was? The PGA he threw his he was throw, he did a double, two handed, I believe, over the head club throw, mm -hmm. which you don't see that often. No, in professional golf. Uh, he's like he missed the cut, not good at the Masters, like he said. He hasn't won anything on Live, which is surprising. There's like you know, it's not the deepest thing over there that they've got going on. So yeah. It's weird. It's weird that he's kind of fallen, if you will, from to top dog. He's not fallen from grace or anything, but he's fallen from the top dog to just not the top dog. Yeah, he's not in the conversation right now. No. It he feels knows like that got to drive him crazy. The conversation's mm -hmm. kind of Scotty, Xander, you know, Ludwig Victor. is in there, Victor, Rory's Mordecai, still around, dude. Mordecai. It's just, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just the facts. People are high on Colin this week. I like him this week. Mm -hmm. it seems like his kind of golf course. You got to be extremely precise. You got to hit crisp iron shots. Like, you can't miss hit anything, and he never miss hits anything. I think I said this on the last show. My non Scotty pick this week is Colin. Yeah. And I know that's easy because he's coming off a couple top finishes, but I got him last Thursday when I saw him play well in the Memorial, and I was like, I think his odds are going to, I think he's like 16 to 1 now to win. I got him at 20 to 1 on Thursday. I saw Scotty is on DraftKings Sportsbook. Hashtag DK partner. He's down to plus 280. So people are betting wow. him. People are betting him at plus 300. They must you be. got to bet him. Yeah. He's I down think, plus 280. That's insane. Because remember, we were freaking out at the Masters, which is half the field size, and he was plus 450. And we were like, oh, my God. And now he's yeah. plus 275 to win the U.S. Open. He was like he was like 7 or 8 to 1 to win the players, I think, or something. Yeah. Somewhere around there. And wins it. And we were like, that seemed crazy. And then he was 4.5 to 1 the Masters. Wins it. Like you gotta be kidding me! He's plus two eighty. Well, we were in the in the press yesterday. I was uh, Rory was in there, and I said, you know, you've been on runs like this, and he goes, I've never been a, on a run like this that he's on. 
which is Rory said that. Rory said that. He goes, I've never Dude, been on a run this good. He won like three tournaments in a row. Two of them were majors. majors I yeah. just think if you look at the consistency, he's got 12 out of 13 top tens on the year's worst finish is 17th. Like he's, in his last eight events, he's got five wins, and they're all. All of his wins, they're no Fakakta wins. It's a major of players in three other signature events. Do you remember when he was on that streak where he hadn't finished outside the top 10 in like. I was going to say, doesn't the top 10 thing turns? go like two years? We have no, like he one earlier this year or something. in um, Palm Springs. Oh, but what I was going to say is like, there was this is like a time last year where he hadn't won any of these tournaments that he's won this year where we were like, dude, that guy hasn't finished outside the top 10 in like 17 starts. Amazing. That was a year ago before he was on this run. Right. Right. He couldn't putt. Now he can putt and he's winning. That's, <laughs> that's the right. difference. He's got eight straight weeks of being in the positive uh, yeah. strokes gain putting. And what about that one streak where he didn't have a round over par? Yeah. For that was broken at uh, oh, Valhalla. How many rounds was that? It was like 50 or something. Oh, my. It took <laughs> fucking handcuffs for that to Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. Right, you know, Rory and, and no too. caddy. Yeah. Rory said right. that he was like the only thing that stopped him from winning was jail, <laughs> which is very funny. <laughs> jail, literal. Right, he jail. probably shoots a sixty-five that day. I know, I know. <laughs> it's so crazy to if think we, about. as like a universe and a society, could do it all over again. Just like see what happens if Scotty doesn't get arrested that morning. How hard is Brian Gillis rooting for Scotty to not win this week? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. true. If he wins this week, the talk going into the open. <laughs> <laughs> what has he won? Five out of the last seven tournaments? Or I think five of eight. Five of eight. And he finished second in Texas, <laughs> and he finished eighth at the PGA from jail. And that Steven, yeah, from that Jaeger. Yeah. Jaeger beat him barely, just barely. That's right. Oh, that's right. That that's was right. the week before the Masters, right? Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, his three other ones were like seconds. <laughs> it's nuts. Dude. It's crazy that Rory would say he's never been on a run like that, but it is true. Statistically, this is the best run since Tiger's heyday, since like 05, 06, 07. There were stretches, dude, where Tiger won like eight tournaments in a row. Yeah, it is funny. I always think, <laughs> dude, I always think about that whenever they're flashing all these graphics. And we've talked a little bit about it in the past, but like, if Tiger didn't exist, all of these things that Scotty has been doing would be like, oh wow, first time a guy has done this. First time a guy has done this. Tiger did it like six separate times yeah, in his career. He did. He did, dude. He had a couple different stretches where the wraparound, like, the, like his last couple tournaments of you know 2006, and then his first five tournaments of 2007, he just won all of them. It's really hard to wrap your brain around the, the Tiger runs and how many he had, how often he did it. It Dude, really is stunning when you really this dive This is into the it. closest that I've seen because I was a little too young for the Tiger like to, to be able to really soak in the dominance of like when he showed up to a tournament, you expected him to win, and then he would win. Yeah. Especially now with DraftKings and the ability to be able to put money on these guys. Like right now, the fact that Scotty's on this run and we're having these conversations on podcasts talking about golf, being like, this guy's probably going to win, and then he is winning, is blowing my mind. I know, I know Tiger's done it already, and I know that he's doubled them and tripled them, but this is the first time I'm experiencing like the doubt of like, no chance he can have another good week. And last, he does. Week, last week was inevitable. Like last week just happened. That doesn't make sense. It just happened. Because I agree. We you talked know, about how like, hard yep, golf he's, is. He's like, <laughs> you're not facing just because you're better than the Wasn't guy ever. behind you doesn't mean that you're necessarily guaranteed to just have a better week than him. No, you can't project your game on somebody else's. So like he could shoot 80 under par, but what's that from stopping someone else from just having a better week? Shoot 81 under. Right. It doesn't like he him being the best shouldn't affect anyone, but he still somehow wins. How is that possible? Honestly, How is no one else better that week. If he finished third every single one of these times, it would be an insane run. Insane. Yeah. insane. He's just winning. Also, to move the line from whatever it started at, probably plus 350, to then have people bet on him, have it moved to plus 280, you're on fire. The crazy part, too, like last night at live on the live from, they were talking about all the stuff and his ball strike. And everybody goes nuts. It's a second shot golf course. And then Brandon was like, what people don't realize is he has like the best short game in history. Totally. So he was like. And he's going to be able to flex it this week because it's fairway everywhere. That's what so he's like saying. So the shots are hard, but they're possible. Because so, everyone's saying second shot golf course, what I've been saying too. It's like kind of the line, which is like, dude, the greens are insane. They're so small because there's really nowhere to hit it. They runs off. Blah, 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 blah. And Brandon was like, it's actually a third shot golf course because you're all going to miss greens with your second shot. Everybody is. Right. And he's like, so what you do with your third shot is what this whole place is about. Whether like Tiger was hitting four irons, like bumping them. People were hitting 60 wedges, chipping them. People were putting them, whatever they're doing. And he was like, what people don't get is like Scotty, what really might separate him is like, he's just got a better short game than everybody else. And Scotty was being, he was saying that in the, in the presser yesterday where he was like, he was like, yeah, like, 
this place is hard. He's like, it's really hard. There's a lot of tricks out stuff. He's like, but there's no hazards. There's no water. And he's like, so really, you really still have an opportunity on every shot. And he's like, while the percentages are lower, he's like, even if there's a window that's this big where you can land it and get it close, he's like, you can. It's doable. Yeah. And I was sitting there thinking like, well, yeah, you're the best player ever. <laughs> like, right. Of course right. For a guy doable, like that, the harder it gets – the more he's going to win. That's why That's I, think I, he's, think. I think he's going to win by three or four this week. I, because I just think this course is like Augusta. Has a, is, Augusta is an incredible golf course at separating the best players and identifying the best players. And I think this course is going to do the same thing. And I think it plays into his hands. I don't know that he is capable of hitting a bad shot right now. <laughs> I really don't. But he made a triple. Still yeah, one more. Dude, he, he did. said yesterday's press, he's like, yeah, no, I didn't even really hit a bad shot there. I just got a bad bounce. <laughs> he did say that. <laughs> I, did. Like, I mean, you hit it out of bounds, dude. <laughs> I, think that, I think that kid Titus asked him a question. He was like, "Hey, when you triple bogey that?" And he was like, "Jesus Christ! <laughs> yeah. When you triple bogey, how'd you keep your head?" And he's like, "I actually didn't hit that bad of a shot." And so you are right, Frankie. He's like, even when he makes a triple, he's like, "Those were good shots." Yeah, he acted like it hit a bird and kicked out of bounds. <laughs> he hit it way low, out of bounds. <laughs> but that's almost the mindset that you need True. to have. He's like, "I didn't hit a bad shot. That was just shit break." Jack it, Nicholas never missed the putt. They just didn't go right. in. Are you hitting the links this weekend? The pros definitely are. Get in on all the tee to green action at DraftKings Sportsbook. And if you're new to DraftKings, you got to check this out. New customers bet five bucks to get 150 in bonus bets instantly. Again, if you are new to DraftKings, new customers bet five bucks to get 150 in bonus bets instantly. It's just fun, man. It's fun to be involved, to have skin in the game. DraftKings does that. They're live in North Carolina now where we are, and we're talking. I heard Trent saying he's going to take maybe Bryson to yep. win. Yep, for sure. It's a great pick. I love it. And he's fun to watch. Right. I just get excited when I see him. I know you were talking about Colin. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about Scotty a lot. We talk about our some of our picks during this podcast. Yeah, it's just fun. It's really, really fun, especially when it's going to be a hard golf course. Like, there's going to be a lot of ups and downs. It's also fun in um, a whole new world, just opening the app and clicking on the U.S. Open tab mm -hmm. and just scrolling through. So fun. You see a name in there, and you're like, oh, he's uh, he's 30 to 1. Okay, I come. There's a lot of throwbacks in the field. Like, it's fun. <laughs> Mateo Montesero is here. You remember Whoa, him from wow. way back in the day? Yeah. Youngest winner ever in DP World Tour history. That's a good name. Former phenom. Rio Ishikawa is in the field. You remember him? I did uh -huh. see that. Uh -huh. Yeah, so there's some guys. Uh, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use the code for FORE. New customers bet five bucks, get 150 in bonus bets instantly. That's code for only on DraftKings. Use that code for. And throughout this show, we kind of talk about different things that we like. So it's kind of an entire show about DK Partner. But uh, make sure you use that code for only on DraftKings. The crown is yours. All these guys are so good. We've been we've been lucky enough. I mean, obviously, shout out to this amazing setup that we've had out here. Shout out to Pinehurst. Shout out to this incredible, incredible, incredible cottage that is called the Don the Dornick, Dornick. Cottage. Um, we've been able to just kind of see a lot of golf on this third hole, on the sixth hole, on the fifth hole, this whole area. Um, and all these guys are hitting out of the bunkers on the on the third hole. It's, they've been taking a lot of time on this green. This green's really fucked. Mm. Yes, um, this green's really fucked. <laughs> But like, like we watched, we we walked nine with Tiger yesterday. He looked amazing, and walked him great. hitting out of him walk um, hitting out of the bunkers was mind blowing. How soft they come out, and you're like, I won't see another shot like that probably in the rest of, for the rest of my life. And then you watch Scotty today. We were on three. Yep. We were just watching him hit out of the bunker here. They're marshmallows coming out of this <laughs> thing. I can't believe how good his hands are out of these bunkers. Yeah. I can't believe it, bro. On this green, he was on that right bunker, and he was trying to get to like where the front pin will be. And I don't even know how you hold a bunker shot down towards that pin. And he was delicately just getting it onto the green. It was taking one check and just slowly rolling to this little fl uh, fake hole that he had. And he put him on the hole every single time. He basically holed out from this bunker. It was the first place he row. walked to. He walked directly to that bunker. Yep, because he knew that might be his mess right there. How good is that? And they're, it looks like they're not even trying when they they're do not that. Even trying. You're like, dude, you need to take some more time. It's a hard shot. And after watching, like, I'm going to watch JT out of the bunker. After watching these guys out of the bunker, I'm completely changing my bunker game. I swing way too hard out of bunkers. You don't need to. It's all about getting under it. Technique. And then just flicking the wrists up. Yeah. That's all they're doing. Yeah. Watch that short game chef video. Bro, it is. Dude, and their tempo is crazy. They take a lot. Like, they don't swing fast, like you're saying. They swing long, though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They take these long back swings and then, like, not fast, yeah. but like same length, 
downswing yeah, that like holster just, feel where like I, the handle just doesn't pop out. Swinging that slow out of a bunker because I feel like I'll just leave it in. Yeah, no, you want yeah. if, you, if you have the right technique, you just got to get that you know the handle into the left pocket like a little Dude, holster. It's, they also do like what I've noticed is they hit so close to it obviously because they're like trying to spin it and they're they could be that precise. But even when they do catch a little bit too much ball. It works out because that means they're like gonna spin the fuck out mm -hmm. of it. And you watch it, like it has that clicky sound, and you're like, oh my God, he bladed it over the green. It lands maybe 10 feet too far, but then like zips. And they've got 12 feet instead of like zero feet. Mm -hmm. And you're like, that's not that bad from a yeah. bunker. That's pretty good. The only time they'll add like speed is if they're trying to hit like a crit, like a really, really soft pin in it because they just need all this, like a short pin because they need all the spin. But other than that, Morikawa does that. Yeah. He, he yeah he does that where he and he does the, he has the closed stance bunker shots yep you know like we were all taught growing up to way open the stance and like almost push like cut high cut push it, yeah. cut spin it thing and he closes the stance and he does it a lot like I notice there's really good clips of him with the downhill bunker lie and he rips through there at like a hundred and 10 miles an hour with his wedge it yeah. feels like he like goes back slowly like he always does and then he fires through there i'm like oh shit and tiger say feels like he's hitting a draw out of a bunker yep that's a fuck a lot of the guys like patrick reed who's one of the best bunker players i've ever seen luke donald same way there's like super square because yeah because if you're going to like a bet they don't want to have cut spin and you just don't you can't control it as much they want the first bounce to be like straight straight yeah that uh, is so true like when we hit these cut things like in order to have it come out high and soft for us it does have violent like side spin yeah and it could land left of the pin or right of the pin and then if you're hitting to a left to right pin it everyone's like "Ooh, great shot and it comes out spins right and ends up like 25 feet right of it and you're yeah. like eh, actually it wasn't well, like i good. think tiger said like <clears throat> anyone can even with chipping in general anyone can can hit cut spin but can you hit draw spin <laughs> and him and there's a video of him and scotty from like either last year two years ago taylor made a taylor made video and it's it's pornographic porn yeah hmm um, did you guys see the clip of Bryson talking with uh, Mr. Mustache? Was it Johnson, Johnson Wagner? Johnson Wagner. No. He's all mustache. I'm all nose pimple right now. He's all mustache. His whole face is a mustache. <laughs> okay. This is a crazy he's got a thing. critter up there. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it really is. Did you guys um, see the clip from him, sorry, about at the PGA when he he was trying the Xander chip he and he was just blading up. him and shanking him? Shanks. Well, now like four they're, yeah, they're, they're just doing that every single tournament now. They're putting him in like really, really tough Smart. positions. It's hilarious. <laughs> it People love great. it. He it was is. out there yesterday, I think, hitting bunker shots. Um, but he was walking with Bryson. Did you guys see this clip? No. So Bryson with his newly made golf clubs that he designed himself. Essentially, it's it's the most Bryson clip of all time. I don't know if we could put the <laughs> audio in. He's holding up. They're doing a walk and talk. He's holding Alex up his iron. His head. We can't. <laughs> he just went. <sighs> yeah, we can't. So. Um, Put the audio in there. Let's throw the audio in there. <laughs> anyway, Bryson's essentially saying that he has curved his iron slightly on the edges. Yeah, like a the, driver. Like a driver. Because with his ball speed, with his swing speed, when he would hit it off the toe, he would hook it like crazy because of the way that the face was always um, shaped. So now because he's swinging these irons with essentially the same type of like uh, swing speed and he has like the MOI, the moment of inertia, similar to most people's driver that he needed to make his iron similar to a driver. And this is like an idiot trying to recreate what he said. I think um, he did a good job. He, yeah, me too. He I mean, now off the, if he hits one off the toe, if he hits one off the heel, it actually corrects and keeps it way straight. Yeah, it's like gear twist face. It's like a twist face yeah. iron. Twist face iron. Can you yeah. do that? Apparently and now can. I'll take the, the conversation is, is 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 hot on Twitter if these are legal now. And I guess the argument that I saw I was reading a lot of people you know, there was a bunch of just Twitter nerds oh, yeah. going at it about MOI. Those and, guys are and, cool. Those and, and and yeah, Dan was in there. It was just like, you know, oh, you guys, everyone was just fucking where I live. left hand <laughs> jerking each other up. It was a circle <laughs> fest. And uh but there were some good points made on both sides. I got to say, like one guy is like, well, what's to say? Like, like if you use game improvement irons or whatever these uh, irons are that they're that they're these manufacturers are currently making, they're making it off of your current swing speed. So like, why is that allowed? But he's not allowed to adjust it based off his swing speed. Mm -hmm. He's in a totally different class than what his clubs that he was using call for. So like, Clearly, all irons and drivers and three woods are made for a certain swing speed to help them and correct them. The QI-10 is made to correct your ball to go left or right or whatever. And he's doing that for his irons. I thought that was a pretty good point. Like, yeah. why is he not allowed to do that? He's swinging at speeds that no one else is swinging at. I think allow it, right? I mean, unless there's, unless there's like 
with drivers, I understand, because you can literally design them to the point where the ball will go as far as you want it to possibly go. Right. You have to, like, hone that in. But with something like this with an iron, as long as there's, like, a down, there's a downside to that, right? Like, there's got to be a I downside to yeah. where, you know, if you don't swing with certain speed or hit it with Correct. a certain, that, like, it's a horrific miss. Right. That, like, wouldn't work for us. But guess what? Like you're saying, it does work for him because he has achieved – a certain skill set that's awesome yeah and that like it only works for that but i guarantee you gave us those irons we couldn't get him in the fucking air no one of the coolest things though is that you know he 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 built up all this speed when he got huge and bloated and now he looks way better and he's still just as fast he has a speed yeah he How still has happen? it I, he said in and we did a speed golf with him and he was like something about neuro i don't know <laughs> literally so he said something about his brain and like twitching and I'm i not, might i might bet on bryson and his illegal irons that dude, sounds he awesome says he can't hook that him sounds he's like, i can't even hook him if i tried now he's like, the way they talk in this <laughs> clip he's holding it up he's like these are perfect for me <laughs> i'm betting on bryson yeah also what a great talking point if he just wins with what half of twitter thinks is illegal yeah. irons that's incredible awesome. and you can tell that he's like kind of dunking on cobra when he talks about these irons because <laughs> every course. time they ask about him he's like oh i just got my equipment in a really good space yeah. <laughs> he's like i finally have equipment that i feel like is is good for me i don't know what the process <laughs> is and you guys might know more than me but what the process is in testing these things but i guess a lot of the comments were like the testing um process is about to be really tested no pun intended because they're experiencing things that the the process didn't call uh, call for in the beginning right so Who like would have thought he's gonna twist face his irons right like so right. whatever they use to see if it's conforming is like really not even like up to up to speed with what <laughs> Bryson's handing them. I what guess is, it's almost like that? the COVID stuff. Remember that? They're right. like, we literally right. can't even like test, test if it. the test that's works. A, that's like what like, that's what golf people are saying. Yeah. Is that you're throwing too many things at them and they're just approving things because it's like out of their realm of like realizing right. if it's what is the you got literal deep in that hole last night, huh? I did, yeah. yeah. Because this opens up a can of worms now. Is everyone just gonna start like 3D printing their own irons? Right. Right. And trying to get that it to the Bryson. Perfect for perfect. you. Right. right. And it costs like what, fifteen grand? That's nothing to these guys. Dude, nothing. He has fuck you money now that he can spend on R and D and he can do whatever he wants. What is the literal process of getting your clubs approved for a week like at the US Open? Do you have to drop them off somewhere? They like, definitely need a physical copy. They definitely need a yeah. club. Yeah. I think I they do, right? That's interesting. Not conforming, non conforming. Yeah, they have like machines that. to test um. Like they can test driver faces because weirdly enough with drivers, the more you hit them, the hotter they get, which yeah. is counterintuitive. You think the more that you hit them, they get less, you hit them less far. But like guys will talk about like, I've got a really great driver right now. It might be on the edge because if you have it for a while, it'll get wow. faster and faster. Oh, wow. I don't know what it's like for iron. That's actually what happened with the Rory driver when it got misconstrued. Like he was saying he didn't like the driver last year. Remember he was like, I would, his comment was basically to the effect of, to paraphrase, he was like, yeah, I really liked the driver that I was using, but unfortunately I'm not, I can't use it anymore. And people thought that meant because TaylorMade's making him use the Stealth 2 instead of the Stealth. And what he was saying was, no, it got tested and was non-conforming because it had gotten too hot. Yeah. That's crazy. Like, like right, before, yeah. right before they crack is when you hit them the furthest, which makes no, it doesn't, it's counterintuitive. Yeah. That's really interesting. They get, I guess they get like thinner. So there's some reason. And it really happens with three woods. Really? With three woods, I, I, from what I understand, is like yeah. three woods can get really hot. And like guys will love their three wood for months because it comes off with the perfect like no spin, basically or the right amount of spin where it's like comes out wow. launching great trajectory but no real like side spin to take off it and they can hit it a mile. My clubs have been ice cold for years. <laughs> I was gonna say, <laughs> freezing. I was still waiting say, for that. Freezing. <laughs> When's my jump gonna happen? When's <laughs> my driver gonna get hot? Put these things on a fucking like beach towel or something <laughs> set. The most prestigious, do you guys say prestigious or prestigious? Prestigious. Prestigious golf courses in the country. I used to say prestigious. I think I'm back in on prestigious. I feel like there's a time and a place for prestigious, but I, mean, I don't know what it is. It almost like sounds in the, more in the prestigious. RNA in Scotland. Or prestigious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Prestigious. Uh, the most prestigious golf courses in the country have trusted Imperial with the design of their headwear for over 100 years. I'm rocking this Imperial hat right now. Beautiful. I love that hat. This thing, this US Open it's rope clean. hat is so clean. The rope is tight. Frankie always comments on how tight that rope is. Yeah. We had a bunch at the uh, Battle in the Pines yesterday. People yeah. were grabbing. They just make such a good hat at Imperial. Yeah, it's got great integrity. You could just tell right. that the crown is perfectly 
um built it's not too high it fits the head great yeah it's a great hat you the rope the rope integrity is incredible you don't tweak it at all like i grab no. it right off the rack the yep. shelf the table i put well, it brim on is it's perfect perfect yep. it's just like instantly perfect they've been doing it for a long time um imperial original styles inc- include the high crown iconic high crown the tour visor worn by golf legends for decades including pga tour pro keith mitchell we love keith mitchell yep. Great guy. Imperial is a proud partner of the PGA of America, PGA Tour, LPGA, USGA, and is the official headwear of the AJGA. Um, licensed collections made in partnership with these organizations are available on their site. They include styles with event logos from the Phoenix Open, the Players' Championship, President's Cup, 2024 U.S. Open, shout out to this week, the 2024 PGA Championship, and much more. And then also, Imperial knows how to customize hats. Customers can mix and match to design your own or upload a logo of your choice to custom.imperial1916.com. We had a guy yesterday at Battle in the Pines, his buddy's trip, he was wearing the hat that he got through Imperial, and it looked incredible. He was like, literally all I did was send him a JPEG, and they made my hats, and it's perfect. And a lot of times, too, they'll be uh, they'll need like minimum orders at these places right. to do anything. Nope, Imperial just does a very quick turnaround, um, free shipping, no minimum. So uh, shop all of Imperial's collections today at imperial1916.com. Use the code BARSTOOL to get 20% off your first order and be on the lookout for Barstool Golf Imperial Headwear coming to your local pro shop soon. That's imperial1916.com. Use that code BARSTOOL. <laughs> how do we feel about Tiger talking about how Charlie is like his swing coach now? Yeah, he. Uh, Did you ask that question in there? No, I didn't. Because I saw it on I your didn't. Twitter. Claire, Claire uh, Rogers asked that question. It was a great question. Yeah, I mean, he, look, he doesn't trust very many people, like you know, just in general. And in I general. think that's his son, and he's you know, he's one of his own. And to say that though publicly, I thought was was surprising. I was expecting they asked, you know, what's his role this week. I was expecting them to say, oh, "You're out here having fun with that." He goes, "No, it's the same. I trust him with my swing and my putting." It is. It's great that he's kind he's 15. of He's kind of <laughs> incapable of being like. Yeah, I mean, I got my son out here. He's got player support. Whatever it says on his everything thing. has a reason. Cool. We're having a good time. He's right. like, well, he knows more about the my golf swing. <laughs> he's <here."> fifteen. <laughs> he's fifteen like, years old. You're like, I mean, like, he did. He literally, said, which I love. He's like, he's seen me hit more balls than anybody. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> I guess, yeah, true, but like, I mean, not really. We had we Mark Blackburn. We did a video. He's like a genius, like a fucking genius. Knows everything about biomechanics and stuff. Like Charlie's fifteen. 15. He's, he's, he's like just, a sophomore. He's like yes. taking algebra. Yeah. yeah. You're right. like, no, no, obviously. He's Tiger, you can just ball. say, I like having him out there. <laughs> That's like, dude. I love having him out. It's definitely part of it is that he loves that Charlie is that into it. That he's probably putting this like sort of importance on Charlie. It makes Charlie feel good. Where he's like, I'm in this with my dad. He's fucking Tiger Woods. This is insane. Does he know as much about the golf swing as XYZ? Who knows? How, how long till he's on the bag? He's going to be on the bag soon. Definitely going to be on the bag. Dude, he's a little Bryson asking that, Tiger, with those answers. Where he's like, well, there's, it's almost a competitive advantage that I've got my son out there. Yeah. Like, he's player support. He's Maybe in the sense that he's comfortable with him. <laughs> so, like, he made a couple comments that, like, when Tiger's, Tiger sometimes forgets to work on certain things when he's out there because he's, like, searching for where their pin locations yeah, he are. he said it with whatever, his putting, which was cool. With his putting. And he's like, Charlie knows... Because it's his dad. Like, he knows when he's kind of, like, not thinking about something. So he went right in and was like, you got to work on this. So maybe he's not, like, the swing guru that he's claiming him to be. But I do think that Tiger's a man of – he needs, like, familiarity around him. He needs his crew to be his crew. And, you know, he doesn't have Joey out there anymore. He's got a new caddy. He has Robbie Mack, obviously. But it's a small world that Tiger likes to keep around him. And I think think Charlie being out there is going to be – is going to be an advantage. Because Charlie – for better, I mean, he's he's been getting this thing drilled into his mind since he was born. He had to have been. Dude, right? Robbie Mack yesterday was so, I 100% agree with that. I think that with Tiger, you're right. Like, you know who the best swing coach is for Tiger is Tiger. Right. So, so if he's always. most comfortable with Charlie out there, great. Whatever. Tiger told Charlie what to look for, and Charlie just says, okay, Dad, like, we'll work on that. This well, also, whole I think year. Charlie's willing to, like, give him shit a little bit. Like, tell him Which what Which I love. Like, give he, him bust his balls. Yeah. And yeah. Like, everybody, no, else is, everybody else who's not. The Tiger Woods blood and like Robbie Mac are scared of Tiger. Yes. Yeah. And they like don't want to say anything. And to I don't him. know that like his new caddy is going to walk in and be like, hey, actually, your alignment's fucked on your body. No you know when a guy like, knows a lot about a golf swing, they'll stand, and I always mess this up. Down the line is like, is down the line is behind. Behind. Yeah. And then what's, what face would, face on. Face on. He'll stand face on and they'll look you up and down. And then you'll swing and they continue to look at you. Yeah. And then they kind of look up at the ball, but they don't really care because they know where it is. Charlie does that with really? Tiger. Dude, he has that look yeah. where he, like, Tiger. And then I noticed Charlie does kind of lean too. They're like this. 
Tr- Charlie did it with really? Max really? Homa really? and um, with um, who else did they play with yesterday? Oh, Minwoo. 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 He did it with Minwoo where he's looking at his hands, his alignment. They would swing. He'd look at them and then he'd just kind of like look up at the ball and not really care because he knew where it was based off of the impact. Yeah, I saw Randy uh, Smith, who's been Scotty's coach forever. He was even more than face on. He was like six or seven yards Last diagonal year. like toward the target looking back at scotty yeah it was a very interesting all right look. So there you go if you want to know if you want to look like you know what you're doing just keep staring just at him stare through impact. face on act like the ball doesn't even exist uh-huh. and people are gonna be like what is that guy looking for he knows what so he's it was doing. on nine and tiger um pulled a he pulled his iron on the part three into like the tree bunkers remember that it was a horrible mm, bad spot and and charlie was watching him and then tiger hit another one right into the middle of the green it was a great spot and he walked over to Charlie, and Charlie did this thing where he was—he did like a slide, like to Tiger, and Tiger mimicked it, and they both just worked on like a slide getting to your front foot. So like, I know that he doesn't really know as much as like a he, Blackburn or whatever, but he knows what Tiger totally. wants to learn, and like, he, and no, work he, it on. works for Tiger. It He's literally Tiger. an extension of Tiger. Woods. Yes, yes. Tiger gives seed, him a bonus, his seed. Yeah, Tiger. They, yes. I mean, they're in the car, they're at the house. Tiger's like, we're gonna work on this because this is what I'm struggling with. Make sure I fucking work so on sick. it. So sick. What a what a what a job! I'm, I'm sorry, you guys. Are, I'm turning on. I think this is. The I thought he thing was great. Right. I've was. been turned. And you know he's not gonna hit the shot for him, but he was out there. He was he was he was doing good, man. He was he was moving him in spots. They were talking about pin locations. Charlie was fucking killing it. I out also, there. There's also the, the awesome. just the aspect that Tiger loves it. He loves Tiger it. Just yeah. loves it. It's also he like it's so the coolest thing that Tiger's ever been through. Yeah. yeah, he's got his son out there at the U.S. Open helping him gear up for a major championship. Major. Right. And I, there's a chance that Charlie was just like, I'm not interested in golf, Dad. And he's just at home playing video games. Right. And tra- yeah. Tiger's just out there. Dude, Robbie Mack was going to say, Robbie Mack was telling me yesterday that Charlie has gone up to him Sunday because they played Sunday. So Monday and yesterday, which was Tuesday, both times because Char- uh, Tiger's out here early in the morning and going over to Robbie Mack have been like, so after we're done here, like, where are we playing? And Robbie's been like, I got a long day. And he's like, we go find the nearest like driving range to where we're staying. And Charlie wants to go hit balls and like work on his game. So he's like, he's obsessed Addicted. with it, which has got to be the coolest thing for Tiger. And I think it's the coolest thing for us as Tiger fans. And like, I think now Tiger's at the point where he wants to win a major championship again with Charlie at this level, with this yes. relationship with golf more than anything ever. Yeah. Yeah. Very I mean, good. Point. I think, you know? Char- I think Tiger, like to his credit, despite like how poor the golf has been recently, he's been in an incredible mood, like pretty much since he came back. Yeah. And I think a lot of that is because of Charlie. I think there's a lot of like joy that he has back God. in his golfing life. Like in in his um, press conferences, he's like, he's delightful. It's like, it's, it's so different than it was. You'd think now he's playing shit. His leg probably hurts like crazy, but he's got his kid around and he's like, you said, he's super, super happy. It's gotta be some psychology to the fact that he thinks he has like a second chance of life too. Yeah. It probably changes you. Yeah. Neurologically. Sure. Has to. Where you're like you're just happy you're doing the thing that you thought you'd never do again. Right. No matter how bad you're doing it, you're still doing it. My dog, who had a very bad health scare, we have a theory that he's like way nicer and more cuddly now. Because <laughs> no, see, because he's like, I saw the edge. He's like, I saw the I went tunnel. To the edge. Yeah, I'm back. Now he's like, now boy, I'm sorry, tummy. guys. I was a real dick there. Well, for a there's like two <laughs> ways. To there's the edge there's like two the ways time. to go <laughs> about life. You could like, you could think about someone. I don't know. Someone like my dad gets heart surgery, yeah. you get a second chance. Are you going to go back and eat like cheese fondue and you're going to like be eating Snickers every night? Right. This is this is a lesson for you, dad. I know Probably. you're listening to this. Are you going to be eating fucking Snickers like at a night? Lecture going or on. are you going to like take this second chance and you're going to like you're going to be happy about it? And you're going to be like, holy shit. Like, yeah, I am going to eat like the grilled chicken and I'm going to eat fruit and vegetables because like I have another chance. Tiger is eating the fruit and vegetables right now. He's not fucking doing the same shit he was doing before the accident. Right. Happened, He's to, just, happened to Tony Soprano after he got shot. Yeah, it's exactly like every right. day he comes out, they wheel him out of hospital. He goes, every day is a gift. Every day is a gift. Yeah, I remember his boy. Could have went the other way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they were like, you, you're but Tiger, Tiger could have <laughs> died in that car crash. No, he's doing great. He's doing well? Yeah, I hadn't seen him for like two is or three like weeks. Hopping back at the Dude, restaurant? We, we, oh, yeah. He's been working. We've had the cricket, the world cricket, the World Cup cricket. Is the crushed. USA beat fucking Pakistan. Yeah, they're a, and they're playing India today. Pakistan good? I think the best. I think if the USA. Biggest, up, biggest upside in the history of the sport. Come on, Some people are saying that. The USA cricket team beating the Pakistan <sighs> cricket team is like Don't is say a it. bigger is a bigger upset than the Miracle on Ice. Stop it, bro. The, one of the guys Let's on the go. cricket team works for like Oracle as like a software engineer, and the, the Pakistani team makes like a billion dollars because it's the biggest sport in the world and they're the best team. Yeah, it's crazy. And we took them down. Yeah, yeah we they took had them down. to hate that on U.S. soil. I mean, oh, it's in America. Yeah, it was in Dallas, and it's in it's across the street from Borelli's. Oh. So my dad has been outside. My dad took 31,000 steps the other day on his iPhone. 
31,000 God, it heart surgery a month ago. Dude, so we came in, we took out Bin Laden in Pakistan, yeah, yeah. and then we dusted him yes. in cricket. Dude, <laughs> these, these guys been, are on he's a been, cold he's been, streak. He <laughs> turned Borelli's into a parking lot for the because it's across the street. Thirty. They built a 33,000-seat arena across the street in the park, and it's temporary. They built a temporary 33,000-seat Stadium. It's like uh, 16 at, at uh, Waste Management. Yeah. It's like those Frankie, kind of stands. Frankie showed me a clip of Mr. Brelli mm -hmm. that local news came and interviewed him about it. <laughs> yeah. And he just goes, business is booming. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, he's smacking the pizza. But anyway, I hadn't seen him in a couple. We have to put that clip in. the in, in, I have it for you. Frank Borelli knows a thing or two about pies and big events. Get attention. There's now a huge sign out front welcoming cricket fans. Classic chicken parmesan. Maybe add some vodka sauce on top of that with mozzarella. I hadn't seen him in like two or three weeks. We just got back from a trip and we went to Borelli's. We had a bunch of family there. We had like eight people. It was a Friday night and he walked in. He wasn't working that night. He was out to dinner with my mom somewhere else. He walked in. He was wearing a yellow collared shirt, white pants. He had a nice belt on. His hair was all done. And he, he must have lost 20 pounds since I last seen him. He looks... He looks like he's 50. Oh, he's lost like 15 years off of his... So great. Dude, his face is tight. Bylon. He's got all the color back in his face. He's like, I look... I guess he must have turned a corner. He said he felt like 30%, 40%, and then one week, him, and now it feels like 80 and like 85, 90. He's yeah. getting there. So, Good. yeah, he looks fucking awesome, man. That's uh, Modern great. medicine's crazy. That's fantastic. It's crazy. Booming. I this love, too. He's cool. just... He's an uh, opportune... Op opportunist too Dude, so. I, matt martin i yeah. guess was driving to the practice rink because the islanders practice right next to where the cricket stadium is it's all right there in the circle and borelli's right across the street well, practicing already well you know so are the rangers so um, a lot of guys <laughs> yeah, a lot of guys are um but he sent me a picture my dad was just outside standing on hempstead turnpike with like a dirty t-shirt on at seven o'clock in the morning and then there was a huge there was a sign with just pencil written on it just said parking thirty dollars <laughs> like, this guy just doesn't fucking stop man. Oh, man. he's the that's best that's great that's great yeah uh yeah nice win for us i'm gonna research more about that so I'll usa i think is playing india i think today they got there's a good. chance that usa goes to like the top five like the super eight or something like that mm -hmm. which would be like you wouldn't believe that USA is in there. Is cricket the one where the games can go for like days? Yeah, yeah not like this version of cricket. Oh, it's a different oh, okay. one. It's like T Twenty or something like that. Oh, There's God. a version where people could be at bat for like days. Yeah, I remember that was happening when we were in Australia. So yeah. cricket has like innings, and innings is like when your team is up, like, and the other team is bowling. Like you, it's not like this version of cricket. I think each team only gets up once. Which that it takes about three hours the whole game. Okay, that would be that is stunning that we won because I don't know if I've ever met a human American that plays cricket. So they're no. they are all of Indian descent. Our but whole a, team. Yeah, they right. are. Nice they work. Are. Poached it's them, an right? English game. No, I think it's like like sons of immigrants that came over. It's in a the British second game, third right? Generation. It's a British game that got massive in India and Pakistan. Yeah. it's a bit like the Indian and Pakistani. Like you just said, like United Kingdom. Like it's like the soccer players in Europe. Yeah. They're huge. They um, unreal win. That's great, dude. Not it's a great USA well. is getting smoked right now. By oh. India, yeah. <laughs> what's the score? I don't know how to read the score, but it says live win probability three percent. Okay, so they <laughs> got, like India's good. I don't know. They actually think the KFC rate. What does the score the say? It says fifty-eight dash four, but it's right next to USA. There's nothing next to India. So that means know. like so basically, when one team is at bat, you know what? I, cricket's a great game if you learn like what's going on. Essentially, you always think that they're on offense, but they're defending the wickets. Yeah. The people with the bat are not like yeah, they're not playing offense. They're defending it like a goalie. So like that bowler is trying to knock those wickets down, and the guy who's up at bat is trying to hit it. And wherever it then goes, you get points based off of that. So if you hit it over the fence, it's six points. If you hit one on the ground and it hits the wall, it's four points. If someone catches one inside, they have like a circle. They have power plays. It's insane. It's an insane sport. But I um, cricket. I like. I like so more like fifty eight. Like that's their inning. If they get to like one hundred and fifty, then like India will, or USA will get up, and they'll have to try and beat one fifty eight. Like that score uh. within their amount of time of being up at bat so it's a, it's a it, once you learn the the um, rules it's actually a pretty easy sport to follow because it's like all right this team had this many points and the next team just has to beat that points and you win the game i can't even imagine how big of a deal this must have been in pakistan oh my god huge that they lost it's to us huge. they hate to, us to the Bro, u.s humiliation so <laughs> pakistan yeah. versus india was the other day and pakistan lost oh. to india and they are the biggest rivalry oh, you could no. possibly imagine other. and it was happening across you from Pirelli's my dad's like this is insane <laughs> this is insane you have to see the video people they were sitting on top of Pirelli's it was it was nuts it's like there it was it was overflowing um and 
dude, like the prime minister from like Pakistan or something like that flew in and rented out. Like there's been ru- there's been like murmurs around all of like Long Island of what's been going on. Like <laughs> they're flying in on private jets, on helicopters. They rented out the whole Garden City Hotel. Like one prime minister rented out the most exclusive hotel in all of Long Island. Well, this is an opportunity for them to flex in New York City. Like yeah. They, oh, yeah. It's just like, oh, that, that great Gatsby house. That looks like what fun for the spot. week. What a location for them to pick to play. Yeah. Just the middle of a, of, a, of a park that never had a stadium. You showed me the stadium. It's elite. So I, tr- I tried to think possible? why couldn't they just do it at like MetLife and it's just a way too big of a field. I think uh, it's like 250. Yeah, I think it's like 300 feet of a circle. So 100 yards each way. Something like that. Yeah. That, wow. that wouldn't fit in a football stadium. No. no. I can't believe they're doing it here. Why are they doing it here? Because the Pakistani prince wanted to flex. Yeah, they have one in Dallas, I think, and they have one in New York. And yeah. And I'd, then are there, is it only America based or is there like, is there games in then Pakistan? Then there's another one in like New Guinea or something like that. Okay. New Guinea T or something like that. Okay. Wow. I don't think I've ever watched a cricket game. Cricket talk. You guys should. Open. It's a good game. You know, Except, it does a good job. That guy, John Boy, like, does like, uh, John, you know, John Boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I'm a Yankees fan, so I always see his stuff. And he's a huge Yankees fan. He does a lot of breakdowns about cricket and he does it for people like us that don't understand oh. what's going on and he's like you guys don't realize how fucking awesome this clip's about to be listen to what i say that's cool and you watch it and you're like wow that's fucking awesome guys are making diving catches barehanded it's nuts yeah interesting that's cool it's cool it's a cool sport get ready for the season with the official sunglasses brand of barstool sports Gentlemen, hold on real quick. Let me toss these bad boys. Jealous, oh, sir. Show us. I'm jealous. Throw those on. Look at those. You're starting to get into sunglasses, I feel like, Frank. Uh, yeah, I just I think I need them because uh, I can't play golf with them that often. I don't know. There's something about me where I like can't see through. It's not glass. abnormal. I feel like a good amount of people are like that. But like driving, I have Imperial. Um, Imperial. Oh, my God. I have Shady Rays in my car right in that little, you know, the sunglass mm-hmm. holder. Oh, yeah. that's, how it's, that's how essential sunglasses are. You got their own holder. Your cars come with a holder knowing that you're obviously going to be wearing you're sunglasses. Need them. Think you about got, that. And yeah. you, we need you to be able to see when the you're biggest per, One of the biggest purchases of your life is going to come. One of the main features is that you're going to press this button and it's going to hold your sunglasses. <laughs> so I think I need to start wearing them and I have been wearing them. I drive on the Southern State Parkway when we drive east. Anytime like after 4 o'clock, the sun is just right in your eyeball. And I'm just sick of it, and I'm wearing sunglasses now. I honestly don't know how you guys do it sometimes. We're out there all day at these tournaments, and you guys don't have Bad sunglasses on. I just like the squinting all day. It doesn't make your face exhausted. Yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> I feel yeah. like your guys' well, muscles. My face is constantly exhausted. <laughs> I'm a very wrinkly 29-year-old, and yeah. that's probably why. Yeah. <laughs> uh, nice. Our yeah. friends at Shady Rays, they got you covered with their newest and boldest premium polarized shades. They're kicking off their most anticipated release of 2024 with a limited edition debut of their rival collection. It's a new single lens style in barstool blue with a premium stool and stars lens etch. If you're looking for something more casual, the classics are also getting the barstool treatment. Both of these styles are perfect for all day, everyday comfort and performance. They have hundreds of options to choose from. It is great. You go to their website, um, head over to ShadyRays.com. Scrolling through all the different styles, options that they got. Sunglasses are definitely a huge extension of your personality, your style, your outfit. You put, you know, put all this into into what you're gonna wear, what kind of shorts, pants, shirts, polos, whatever you like. Obviously, you want to do the same with um, with your sunglasses, and Shady Rays is gonna help you. So head over to shadyrays.com, use the code four F O R E for thirty five percent off polarized sunglasses. That's a huge, huge discount. It's great. Try for yourself the sh- uh, shades rated five stars. By over 300,000 people. It's a lot. Rated five stars by over 300,000 people. That's a lot. 35% off. ShadyRays.com. Use our code for. Rory McIlroy, a little bit of news, uh, personal news, has now announced they're calling off his divorce. Sounds like he and Erica. That's right, Erica. Yep. Uh, they have, you know, reconciled their differences. Um, overall, good thing. Like nice. we root for families and for yeah, love. Yeah, I mean, you, I will podcast. say you, you don't see that very often. You sure don't, and you know you have to wonder if that's a regret, regretted move that they filed because if they just for the last month kind of handled this right privately, then it's maybe something like in the heat of battle or whatever. You just like something like that. But yeah, I mean, I I will say Rory just can't stay out of the news. You know, one way or the other, mm-hmm. divorce, not divorced, all the live stuff in the past two years. Policy board, not policy. Policy board, board not policy board. Let's. If I'm Rory and I'm Rory's camp, let's calm it down. 
you know, less less juice. You know, like he just. But wants then you to also be... want him to win, so it's like then he's going to continue to be in the news. I would like him to be in the, in the news for winning for sure. This was a slight like up, at least some positive. That's positive. I think it's mostly they positive. figured it out. I, Whatever it was, they figured it out. Yeah, I, you know, I will say the statement was a or the quote from Rory was a little bit like, "We're just getting back together for the kid." It's like new beginnings, it, it, fresh start. It was more. It was more like. We kind of decided that, like, going forward as a family is better. Yeah. It's kind of what it said. It didn't necessarily say, like, God, we, like, we really found that we're so in love with each other. So yeah. No. It didn't really say that, which is just, like, it, the whole thing, it's good. It's positive they're back. The whole thing is just, like, you're saying, him being in the news for this seemed unnecessary. You know what I'm saying? I it's will like, also say is, like, as a golf podcast, it's weird to talk about like this is playing out in a very public fashion. Like we talk about, yeah. you know what I mean? Like I didn't think the, in the last month or so, I didn't think we'd be talking about Rory's divorce and Rory getting undivorced. I thought we'd be talking about, is he going to win at Piners number two? Right. It's very strange. And I know we talk about a lot of things. We just talk about cricket for 20 minutes, but like <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's a weird one. Either, no matter how you talk about it, you're just kind of like, I don't know. I hope it works out. Yeah. Right. And it's weird to <laughs> have a take your way in all the way around. Yeah. You almost like can't have a, a take necessarily, but like it's clearly newsworthy that every outlet's right. posting about it, yeah. you know, and you're just kind of like, all right, that's interesting. And look, it's no surprise that like in golf, which is such a mental, emotional sport that like what's going on in your life, I think leads people to then real, like think that it, it affects your golf game no matter what. So hearing like someone like that, who's so vocal, so candid, to feel like he had like really found like, this is gonna be his family life forever and he's got the kid Poppy, is that his name, which is adorable and the whole deal, and that he's like the face of the PGA tour, and then to hear like the divorce announcement during the last major was crazy, where everyone's like, Whoa, that's a it's like a, every major we're getting a Rory McElroy marriage and update. That's what I'm saying, where it is it's just like, okay, and you're right, where it's not something that you're like comfortable nobody's comfortable talking about it, it seems happy, but it's like it's everywhere. You got to kind of mention it. It's like everyone that if you're walking around this course with someone and you pull out your phone and you saw that your elbow and the guy next to you being like, oh, did you see this? You Definitely. Know, it's just interesting. I'm with you. It's, it's interesting. It's we root, an interesting topic. We root for families here. Yeah. Sure. We like we're pro family. Anti-divorce. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Where are we at um, with this whole agreement thing with the. Yeah, Alan and, had some. Um, he tweeted that the, there was a draft agreement. I, it just sounds like a framework agreement. The year anniversary is past. Happy, yeah. happy framework agreement that's right. anniversary, that's everybody. Right. June that's 6th. Right. There's, there's rumors celebrate. that something's been signed. <laughs> Crazy between, that it's June between 6th. Who would it be? The PIF? That's not, and, yeah, the, the PIF would be investing in the new PGA Tour Enterprises, <laughs> but but the, the, the devil is in the details in the sense of what's going to happen with Liv. Or is Liv going to be folded up? What's going to happen with the guys who are on Liv now and lost their PGA Tour status? So. They are obviously making progress. They had this big meeting in New York City um, that the, the the billionaires were at. Rory uh, zoomed in. There's all, they, Tiger they, was there. Tiger was was he in in New York? He flew up for it. Yeah. So that it was you know obviously a big meeting, and they all said that it was productive. But at this point, it's like just show me show me a deal. Have you guys ever been a part of a meeting that like never got to the end of it, and like it just kept prolonging, <laughs> and you all just like left unhappy? Have you guys? We've been in pretty big meetings. I feel like contract stuff stuff with like sponsors have you have we ever been a part of a meeting where like at the end of it we're like we'll get back to you guys someone and then we usually, continued the meeting no i don't think so someone usually finishes it with okay so next steps here are right yeah. and then someone's like this is what we're gonna do i've always wanted to be a part of a meeting like this where it goes on for years like what how does it end i'm gonna let it do, we're gonna well, let it marinate for the weekend and then it's like we'll one of these cricket say, games. do they just like leave well, do they leave and like not shake hands are they mad well, at each genuinely, other here's kind of the difference and maybe it is maybe it isn't but like Dave Porter is a very decisive individual. Yeah. We don't leave a Dave Porter meeting <laughs> no. not knowing which way we're leaning. That's true. Feels very like clear how we, tour, are. we yeah. have a le- They have a leader where it's like, <laughs> they're kind of like, everyone just kind of walks away slowly That's from what the I mean. table. Like they're having all these meetings. They're flying in from Saudi Arabia. They're in New York City. Why is this not getting done? Like don't leave until it gets done. It's like a jury. Like, Keep d- them in there. I right? think like both sides, both sides, like you don't want to be the, you know, you don't want to portray like desperation it's a negotiation at the end of the day they walk in they shake hands they go all right we're gonna do this again in two months yeah it's crazy that's it. let it marinate all right we <laughs> like where we back. left off we'll pick back. up in yeah. six months what it I is true it, that's so bizarre get it done now i think about that a lot in politics too well they'll do like these summits you know yeah and they'll go and they'll meet at like camp david or whatever and they'll have like a morning meeting and then they like adjourn for a few hours and then they're like come back and they're like 
all right, we're going to continue meeting now. Yeah. And you're like, well, well you mean, know what happens in those three or four hours is like, everybody that's how huddles, the world changes. Everybody yes. huddles back together and then succession. one of the guys yeah. meets with one of the other succession. guys on the side and it's like, how about succession. we really, when they're changes. at that retreat? How about yeah, we no. hash this out like men here? Let's do this. Yeah. You know? There's just no urgency. There's been no urgency. I guess, uh, yeah, I guess the time is on one of their sides because like as negotiations continue, maybe the PGA tour starts to gain a little momentum. And then like by the next meeting, they have more negotiating power. I think it's all Scotty on Yasser's. Scheffler. I think time is on Yasser's side. I agree. Side. It's I on think the money's they side, want to get know. this done before the off season because the off season lives going to sign more players. Yeah. And I also think like Yasser, a, they've clearly got the unlimited pit of money on their sides. They're like, well, you're never going to bleed us dry. And I also think Yasser plays this flex card where he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to come. I'll meet you guys in New York. We'll do the thing. And then he's like, and then I'm also going to go run Newcastle. Newcastle. Yeah. I'm going to then in this. Well, you guys are doing this is your whole life here that you guys are going to deal. So true. Go do your thing, which is all of this is everything to you. And I'm going to go run yeah. these other way bigger things. And then I'll come back to this. Next he's in month. the meeting doing one of these. Just <laughs> looking at yeah. the fact that he all right, let's go, boys. Aramco. I'm going to go run that. And like <laughs> all crazy. this. Dude, Aramco, Piff, Newcastle, and Live Goal. He runs them all. Is he the most powerful man in sports? He's the most powerful man who's probably not a head of state in the world. <laughs> like, he, like he, literally. Any, any. I mean, his story. I, I actually want to read a biography. I think someone wrote one. I want to read a biography about him because his there's, rise is so interesting. That. The Shipnook book, Gets Live or it, Let right? Die. There's like several pages. It might be 20, 30 pages that basically go through Yasser's entire <laughs> like rise from you know, whatever province he's from. He's the son of like a doctor or something like that. And then he goes to university and then like he becomes the most powerful person in Saudi Arabia. That's not MBS yeah. basically. And it goes through the whole thing and it's really well done. And he does it in the context of like geopolitics kind of, and what was going on in Saudi Arabia at the time and how MBS came to power. And he wanted to have a much more progressive sort of public international reputation and that he kind of leaned on um, Yasser to do that. And Yasser crushed it and, you know, the whole deal. Alan's books are so good. They're good. Like, whatever you think about his personality, his books are amazing. And they're all very much worth reading. Yeah, as a history guy, and I know Trent, you're a history guy. Like, yeah. the whole first hundred pages or so of, like, Live and Let Die is a truly engaging, like, history lesson on a lot of this stuff. On the history of the PGA Tour, on the history of, like, Saudi Arabia, and how they got to this point and how... Yasser, too, like a lot of the reason that he is so um, front facing and sort of the face of like the PIF and all that is because of the Khashoggi horrific tragedy situation that happened and how MBS, that was sort of, he was that role for years and years. Yeah, in he his was on mind. the news. So. He was like the guy that was yeah. going to be on the news. And then when that happened, he sort of like internationally was obviously decried and like people he was disgraced however that like he couldn't be on there so he kind of tapped yasser to be the guy so yasser is sort of the guy now and it's like it's crazy and that's the guy meeting with tiger and the minute again i think you're right he's doing the watch check being like you oh, know yeah. guys i got some like bigger fish to fry here this is what you guys came up with like go do your thing for a couple more months and let me know what you think right and Fuck. that's that's in his that's favor point. Man. it's that's, a really good point it's very much in his favor DraftKings sports like a couple interesting uh Little prop bets and, and such that I saw on there. Please. Dan put one on my radar that is. Well, I don't know if this was the odd. I saw these odds like two days ago. Did you check? Um, point is, Tiger Woods, to make the cut, is a significant underdog. Yes. And I've seen a couple different numbers. It's changed a little bit. I've heard like plus 200, plus 300 um, is his line to, to make the cut. I'm going to try to pull that up right now. Trent, I know one of our favorite bets, hole in one. Yeah. Plus 100, even money. Okay. That there would wow, be an ace. Those, they're so hard. These I know, I are so hard. They are. But here's what I like. When it's firm, I think it has almost more of a chance because the ball rolls by the hole instead of like plopping down right where it sits. Yeah. And there's 156 players in the field. So it's as big a field as you get all year. Yeah. And there's, you know, there's four par threes times 156 players. Like, there's a lot of opportunities to get an ace. Yeah, I just they're just I when I see those part threes, I stand on those tees. The ace is not the thing that comes in my mind, but that's why I'm not playing. I like that one. Top lefty, this is for you, Frankie. Oh. Top lefty. Um, this is a tournament prop bet on DraftKings, DK partner. Uh Brian Harmon's plus two hundred. The pick that I Small really odds. like. Robbie McIntyre. Ooh. Plus two twenty to be top lefty. Who's the lefty we met yesterday? Oh. God. Not on this Give list to be top, top lefty. There? Phil Mickelson's plus 750. Lefty. Okay. Akshay Batia. Uh, Batia. Batia. Nope, Batia. it was not. He, he is, is plus um, 
Sam Bearstrom. Asian. Okay. Yeah, he was with... Uh, 37 years old. Oh, John Chin. He's playing in his first major championship. Yes. At 37 years old. He was Dude. crying on the golf channel. It was awesome. Came up to me. That guy's awesome. After yeah. he hit on the fourth hole, he, I go, who the fuck is this lefty? Right? Yeah. I had no idea. Rips a drive on four. Turns around, runs up to me and Riggs, uh, and I guess Brendan. Mm -hmm. He goes, is this guy? And he grabs my hand. He goes, has this guy fixed this chipping yet? And I was like, yeah, we fixed it. I'm like, now it's putting. He's like, what's wrong with your putting? We're talking, talking. He's like, I love your guys' videos. Unbelievable That's stuff. awesome. Yeah, he's, he's, like, a, I'm so, he, he's like, so happy to see you guys. I'm he's like, a California hey. guy. He's been grinding. I think he last played on the Corn Ferry Tour like three or four years ago. And he, you know, he got through local Dude, and final It was shocking because he was with like Sungjae, I think. Yeah. He was with like Sungjae and... You guys see a, Willie? Crew, yeah, yeah so we saw Willie. Willie's yeah, great. Him and the Prince. Willie, as as uh, <laughs> he's the best. He's the best. The Prince, he's so rich. He texts me. He texts me the other day. He goes, "I'm so rich." <laughs> <laughs> he he uh, he did a funny walk. He goes, "I'm just gonna walk with you guys the rest of the way." Is that cool? So he's like to the yeah, Prince. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah he's like, "Sonja, I'm just gonna leave." And Sonja's like, "I don't know." <laughs> Sonja had no response. Me no, and Frankie just... gave him like a fist. Didn't we give Sonja a little yeah, fist bump? Yeah, we gave him bump. fist bumps. Yeah. yeah, he was. He just smiled. He didn't know what the fuck. Brendan ran right up to him. Yeah. He knew what yeah. was going on. I think. Cool. Awesome. What a beautiful card to be able to play that you're just, you have you have no idea. Even if you know exactly what's going on, if you just can look at people and no they clue. believe that you just, it's not your fault, you have no idea what's going on. <laughs> yeah. I wish I could do that. That's what yeah. I'm saying. I wish I could do that all the time. That's a dream. Just like, I don't know. That's a dream. Um, I don't know, boys. So, I, yeah. That's our, that, I would love for that guy to be the top left. John I mean, Chin. Be tough. Like he's not even in the odds, unfortunately. He's not on He's this. not in the odds. No. John Chin. He's yeah. worse than plus 750. I know that because Phil's <laughs> plus 750. McIntyre's a good one, though. Yeah. I like that. Um, Tiger Woods is plus 220 to make the cut. I like that. I'm taking that. I'm taking, I'm that, taking that, too. that, too. I'm taking that. I'm taking that. He's am... chipping around with a four iron. No one else is. This guy knows. He's got the biggest golf brain. Plus 220 to make the cut. I'm taking that for sure. I think I, I am, too. Heavy. I think I'm taking Tiger Woods to make the cut. Plus two twenty. I, I have to. You have said to. you think cuts gonna be like plus six, plus seven. That range would be kind of my guess too. He's in there, dude. It's not only a grip; it is the sole connection between your hands and your golf club. It's in your hands on every single shot. And a recent study, Golf Pride, found that with fresh grips, you can gain two yards. Just another reason to refresh your set and refresh your game. I got to tell you, there's nothing more confidence boosting in golf. When you have a fresh set of grips on it, it's the best. Like I don't, you know, it's it's not crazy expensive either. No. Like getting new grips yeah, is true. the best, probably the most efficient money that you can spend to feel like you have new clubs without having to spend the money to actually get new clubs. It's a clean reset on your game, yeah, yeah it, it is. really is. Especially on your driver, when you're when you maybe are lacking confidence in that thing, you throw a new grip on there, a new golf pride. You have that club in your hand on the first tee with that new grip. Oh, my God, man. You feel like you can conquer the world. You really do. More than 80% of tour professionals choose to play golf pride grips. Yeah, 80%. man. 80%. Uh, um, you can't worry about it if the ball is going in the hole or not. You just simply can't if you haven't worried about what's happening at impact. That's the only thing that matters. That's what led Golf Pride to design a grip to ensure your setup to succeed in that split second. And new with the putters, they've got the reverse taper technology to ensure you have uh, more consistently square face at impact, a grip that's most impactful during the most impactful split second in golf. This um, reverse taper, I put this on my putter my gamer like a month ago maybe, and putted great with it, loved it. And then, you know, it's one of those, it's a golf guy move. It's, it's, um, it's very similar to like a man, a dude move. If somebody's got tools out, you know, somebody's like, "Oh, you, oh, you just that that new like, drill? Right. You got those kind of." It's same with the when you throw this new putter grip on there. Everybody in the group, oh, is that that new reverse taper golf putter? Yeah, yeah. They grab that thing. Oh, that feels nice. They all do like the little shadow putting stroke. Oh thing. yeah. Everybody's like, this is actually feels like what your hands. And are with a putter, the putter. grip is like the putter. <laughs> it really is. It's really like, it yeah. makes the whole thing. Yeah. Is the whole thing feel. And the only thing you're thinner, feeling is that longer. It's. The head at the end of the day is, yeah, it's important in, in terms of feel, but that I mean, can change the whole thing. Tiger always talked about the only connection, his dad would always say, the only connection to the club. Everything else, it just all goes through your hands. You feel everything through the grip. Yeah. Yep. The whole game is through the grip. This reverse taper, I highly recommend it. Purchase the Golf Pride reverse taper grip today in store or at golfpride.com slash se dash reverse dash taper. That's golfpride.com. Go check out their website. You can scroll around and find it. But the actual link, golfpride.com slash 
SE-reverse-taper, um, or jump into a golf store again. They're going to have these things. They're great. They're perfect for your hand. And uh, as I said, more than 80% of tour professionals choose to play golf pride grips. They're the best in the business. Dude, I'm also excited. We're going to see some high scores. Like someone might shoot in the 90s. This That's year. what was missing from LACC <laughs> last year. They're just, you know, the winning score didn't end up being that crazy. I think it was 10 under, but there was no, there was not a top 50 player shooting 83. And you're going to get that this week. <laughs> what happens if they torch this place? Is there extreme panic for the U.S. Open? The fact that they're coming back here, it's the anchor site. Like, what if they, what if the winning score is 15 under and they just fucking torch this place? I think with the weather, there's no way that can happen. It's going to be 93 on Saturday. It's going to be so I just dry. think like they get to make it as hard as they want. Yeah. It's not unpredictable, which like if there was going to be a massive rainstorm or something, they could get fucked. This is, the, this is the perfect scenario for them. But if that does happen, I do think it's a panic. People are like, do we need to put rough back in? Do we need right. to somehow make this course a thousand yards longer? Because they're coming here every five years. So, I mean, year. they've already set this place until like, the tw they've already set the U.S. Open schedule until what, like 2050 something? Yeah, they, yeah, they have like, very few open spots. Like, if you make a mistake in there, you're fucked. Turn the hoses off. Yeah, true. <laughs> It's amazing you can turn up a golf course that hard where, like, the guys can't, the best players in the world can't get the ball in the hole if you just, like, fuck around with the green. Let, yeah, that's what it takes, which, again, it seems like it needs to be more complicated than that. It seems right. like you need to build thousands of yards worth of golf right. stuff, and they're like, no, you just change the firmness of the greens, and they're fucked. because <laughs> yeah. no one hits, even the best players in the world, they don't hit perfect, perfect shots, like, ever. And so it's... No. It's possible to get to these pins if you hit a perfect, perfect shot, but they're just not going to do it. No they one were, can do it. They were doing such a cool breakdown, too, of how big the greens are, but how small they actually are. If you look at, like, where the ball won't roll off from, and they're, like, the smallest greens in the oh, world. Oh, yeah, they were calling it, like, effective areas. Yeah, yeah. Where they were, like, showing the areas where you can really hit, and they're even smaller than the real greens. I don't want to get up too much from my video, but I, ended up I played from 1,000 yards shorter than these guys, but I made four birdies, like, coming into these greens. And what you guys were talking about with Brandle a little bit, where like guys are hitting cuts and then it kind of rolls off the spots that they don't want to. What I've been realizing with my game recently, and I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the new 770s that I've been using, but I'm hitting little draws with my irons now. And I was getting this like one hop forward and it was staying on top of these plateaus on these turtleback greens. Mm -hmm. And like that to me, I wasn't even trying to do that. It's just the way my ball flight is right now. But I feel like, and Brandon said, you'll see a lot more of that where it's like you want balls to yeah, that makes do sense. that one skip right. up as mm -hmm. opposed to like the hit and rip off because you're never going to be able to hold. Yeah, right. you don't want to be one of those guys who's like taking big chunks and hitting like big high spinny fades Cut, into yeah. these greens. It is true. Like if you land one in the middle of the green, but it's cutting pretty hard. It's going to fall off. It's not going to stay on the right, green, which right. is nuts. Whereas usually that's fine. Yeah. You know, that's going to stay right. It's actually the preferred point. flight. It's what Jack Nicklaus I mean, did forever. Valhalla was like a dartboard. It was just like stayed. Exactly where it was, right. no, matter, no matter what the flight was. It Low, was high, draw, fade. It was just like boom. I remember that eleventh hole was like they were that par three, uh, at Valhalla, and they was like two ten or something. They were hitting these like towering like six irons or something in, and you're thinking like this, and they just stop within inches of their ball mark is where the ball would end up. Yeah. You're like, oh yeah, that's like they can just do that. That's easy. They do that here. Hopefully, it's just a different result. I can't wait. I'm I'm as juiced up, man, as I've ever been. I know we've been saying it for like four shows now. Me and Dan talked a lot of Piners last week, but being here, seeing all the clips come out, all the sound bites, all the quotes, it's like it's nuts to see this course. That like, God, we filmed that Kisner video here over wow, four years man. ago. Probably yeah, four. We filmed that Kisner match, which I've seen like a lot of people have actually referenced that this week. We've been out there being like, I watched that scramble match against Kiz again, which is a great test, but or a great way to kind of prepare for the whole thing. Watch that, watch Frankie's video. But um to like now see this golf course is actually hosting a US Open mm -hmm. and to see Max Homa and these guys out there hitting shots into these greens. Like on six, we watched Max Homa yesterday hit like a three wood in there frankie mm -hmm. and it landed and it looked like the gra the gallery was clapping like people were standing and clapping and it rolled off the green into a horrible spot it took him a couple chips to get on and he like didn't finish the hole <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, oh my god Jesus. <laughs> it was sick it was absolutely sick so yeah uh it's gonna be a great us open i think hopefully they get it right and hopefully they push the line like i if the USGA goes over the line a little bit, I have no problem with that. Nor do a couple I. Pin locations that are ridiculous and yeah. like a couple people complaining. One tournament a year, that. it's fine. Pissing the players off does nothing for, it doesn't affect the viewer at all. Like it makes people it way it. better. They're, they're still going to exactly. play. They're still yeah, yeah, they're play. still going to play. We're still doing the Zach Johnson. They lost the golf course bit. <laughs> yeah. It's been six years. Yeah, yeah, but it's even it's like great. like it if a guy great. four putts a green and like motherfucks the golf course off camera, 
all we saw was the four putt and we're in our group chats like holy shit shared, look what happened viral like look at the u.s open is yeah, what we want we don't care look, about it's back. what that guy thinks about the course look what mm-hmm. nelly corda made of 10 right everyone's sharing that like you see the u.s women's yeah. open nelly's making 10 you need it once a year you yeah. need it yeah yep. calls for it it's gonna be great it's gonna be great i hope everybody enjoys it hope everybody that gets out to piners has a good time weather looks great uh we'll do a um uh recap show pretty much right afterwards i think sunday mm. we'll probably do we'll get it out monday morning alex bushman will have to work hard but uh it's u.s open time it's our national championship it's piners where we have a lot of history and relationship here so let's have a good week let's go hit it hard hit, hit it hard. hard hit it hard